This is going to be a kind of peek at what the class is going to look like. Of course, there'll be more participants in the class. It won't just be me and one other person. Um, and you who are watching get to see kind of what it'll be like to be a, an observer of the class. So um, if you're finding yourself interested in signing up, uh, follow the link in the description and or it's also in the comments. It, there's a pinned comment for YouTube and for Facebook. Can you hear me? Check. There Check. he is. <laughs> All good. Fantastic. All right. All right. So, so anyway, Brad, Brad Lewis from where? Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. All right. Awesome. And I'm Anthony Parker, and we're going to do a little guitar class here. Um, so let's get started. Um, Brad, can you... You told me in an email that you were working on the five pentatonic scales. Can you can you go through them one by one for me? Sure. Just so however you're practicing them. Yeah. So so I, I started off with position one and then added position two, position three. I'm kind of working on position four now. So just show um, me start at one and just show me each one. Sure. And then slide up to two. down to three. And I'm working on four, something like. So do you have your book nearby? I have it, yes. So Brad actually purchased my guitar instruction book. Oh, he's got it on digital, yes. Uh, this, let's see, let me show y'all. In case y'all are interested, this is the book he has, but he has a digital copy. There are digital copies available for this on my website, anthonyparkerexp.com. Uh, this is my guitar instruction book, and he's, I think he used that for the uh, five pentatonic scales. So um, here's what I want you to, I want you to change what you're doing slightly, um, Brad. Um, rather, than, rather than doing the up and one down and the other, which is a great exercise, can you just go up and, up and down in each one for me real quick and use the diagrams to help you with four and five? Sure. So. Then position two would be. Sorry. Right on. Position three. And if I just take a look at my position four here, I've got one, four, one, four, one, three, one, three, two, four, one, four. That's position four. And then position five is one, I'm sorry, two, four, two, four, one, four, four, one, four. You, re you reached out of position there. On the one fours, you reached out of position a little bit. Yeah, we're on the 12th fret, right? Um, right here. It should be. Okay, so um, right on. Awesome. Awesome. Excellent. So that's how you do it. I wouldn't, um, I don't know if you're spending a lot of time working on going up and one down and the other. Um, I would start by maybe just getting them memorized first rather than worrying about that concept. Um, but anyway, in any event, so right away what I'm noticing is that you're not in the habit of just automatically doing alternate picking. Mm, true. So can you do them, can you do just the first couple with alternate picking for me, please? Sure. So I want to stop you now. So it was it was funny what you did. You doubled the top note, but then you but then you doubled it. I think you at some point along the line right away you did two two strokes in the same direction. 
one of the beauty the beautiful part about doubling the top note is that it flips your picking around so you're picking in a perfect down up down up down up and not starting each new string in this direction with an upstroke which is harder okay. so if you're going to double that top note um make sure that you don't flip the picking around by doing two upstrokes in a row or two downstrokes in a row. That way you keep the nice motion where your upstroke brings you right in position to the next string. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah, so no matter what, it's up, down, up, down, up, down, all the way through. It's never up, up down, down, up, as much up. as you can possibly do. So do that again and, and try that, what I, what I mentioned. Okay. Okay, so that was great. That time you didn't double the top note, but you and you but you kept the picking totally um, uh, consistent oh, the whole shoot. time. So both, so that's good too, because then you're then you're learning how to you know how to how to you know do that because there are going to be times it's not always going to be perfect. Now, I actually like to try to do things little tricks here and there to make sure that I'm starting every new string with a downstroke as opposed to an upstroke it doesn't always work in certain riffs you have to do it the other way but you know I do like to do that and you'll you can work on ideas like that where you add in a pull off here or there so that you're you know so that you're not like if you go like this for example right I did that but if I do a pull off and suddenly I'm starting the next string with a downstroke, which can be easier, though not necessary. Um, okay, so that's awesome. So the first, right off the bat, what I want you to start doing moving forward is get in the habit of always playing with alternate picking. No more downs, no more all downstrokes. The only time you're going to do all downstrokes is if you're playing like a heavy metal riff and you want that, right, that chug chug sound and you want to sound like Metallica where they do all downstrokes. But other than that, I want you to just right off the bat, just even if, even though at first it's not going to work well, you're going to miss strings, you're going to be annoyed. I want you to be doing that where you're just, you're, you're committing to alternate picking. The sooner you commit to it, the more you'll just start to get it right and I see this all the time students do that where they they take a long time before that they, they're always when they show me something they just uh, default to downstrokes and yeah so so right off the bat do that uh, do you know how to do this three pattern So I actually just learned this a, a couple weeks ago and I haven't practiced it much, but what you're saying is is you hit the first note and then you hit the second and then the third note and then you come back to the next note and hit the note yeah, out. So, yeah. so, th so if you if you could look at it like a mathematical equation, you're gonna go. So if you if you number the notes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, then you go one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five, four, five, six, five, six, seven, and so on. So just play through it like that for me once. Sure. Again, I'm down strumming only. Yeah, great. D don't worry about alternate picking right now. I'm sorry. No problem. No problem. Okay, and then, of course, you also want, but wait, wait. You got to reverse directions. Oh. 12, 11, 10, 11, 10, 9, and so on. Okay, so 12, 11, 10. Oops, that was it. 12, 11, 10. Yeah. 11, 10, 9. There you go. 11, 10. 10, I'm 9, sorry. 8. 10, 9, 8. <laughs> this he's is really not hard. Say, he's not talking about frets, folks. He's not talking about <laughs> frets. It's a mathematical equation. You got it. You got it. You can stop there. Okay. So, so you understand the concept. Yes. Now, this, this is... I've found that um, the three pattern is one of the ways that a lot of my students over the years found their speed. Like they found their picking speed. Suddenly they come to me and because of the three pattern, because of learning it, because I'll start having them do it with alternate picking. 
and some suddenly they'll come up to me one day and be like, look, and they'll have found their speed. There's something about the way it works. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to dramatically improve your ability to find the string you want without having to look at your picking hand. You're not going to hit the wrong string very often anymore if you practice the three pattern a lot because it's forcing you to jump back and forth on strings. So one of the things I want you to add into your practice routine is that three pattern. Sure. Okay, last of all, can you do? Um, can you play up and down, up your pentatonic scale, hammering the pinky or third finger, only picking the first finger note, hammering the pinky or third finger. Nice. How about pull-offs? Uh. Okay, that's great. So your hammer-ons were were super confident and awesome. And that's great. Uh, the pull-offs, you're having kind of the same issue that most people have, and that is, and that is stringing, stringing them along. So, um, you know, one of the suggestions that I would have is to is you got What one thing you want to notice is, and I'll slow it way down, is you're going to kind of you're going to like spider walk your fingers almost. Like watch. So I go like. And then pick, move the other finger to back it up. Pick, move the other finger to back it up. Pick, move the other finger to back. You see what I'm doing? Yeah. I'm over exaggerating it so you can see, but that's that's the motion of what's going on. That okay. way you keep the na 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 na. You keep the flow of notes nice and legato. Sure. So try that just with a couple of notes real quick. See, and just go extra slow and just try and get the pinky in position to the next string before you're done. You see what I'm saying? Sure. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Okay, you're still, you're, you're, you, it started off really well and then you started jumping. Just over exaggerate it before you take your first finger off, get the next finger down on that note, play it and then move the finger. It's not going to sound great, and it's going to be slow, but don't worry. Yes. Yes. So there, that's your first step with, pen, with, with pull-offs. The other thing you want to do that's always helpful is just practice this. So do this for me. Um, just hammer-pull combos. Yeah, great. Yeah. And that's another thing you can do is is another way to make this less boring is to come up, is is to do a lick you know like so let's try that just basic guitar lick so you gotta get that other finger to to catch the note see you're not okay sorry so you're gonna go. 5-3, we're in G minor, by the way, for anybody interested. We're in the key of G minor pentatonic. I'm going 5-3 and then 5-3. In both cases, it's 5-3, 5-3. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, and then back to the 5. Yeah. Yes, awesome. So that that's just a super basic lick you can use to practice this concept. Okay, and let me see. Um, how about how about the vibrato? Okay. So you're on the right track. You're Easier on the right to track. Easier done than electric. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you're you're. So my suggestion. So the good news is is that you're not trying to do it with your finger. You're trying to. Do, you're using the right motion. You're. It's like you're turning a doorknob, right? That's the motion. The, uh, the, so what you're going to want to do for what I'm watching, and I don't know, you know, you might be a little nervous, who knows what other things go on, but one thing that I know is a good practice is slow it down. And a really good practice, if you really want to like, you know, become extra awesome, is play a song and do, do, do. Try to go to the beat. Bum, 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 bum. You could even try like. 
triplets or you know um one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a right to the to the beat of a song so that's that those are little things you can play around with but definitely practice slowing it down and then maybe speeding it up slowly rather because you it looks a little frantic to me <laughs> and uh, you want to you want to that's the way to work on that and i could be wrong like i said this could be something and maybe you're just way more used to it on an electric which is totally understandable it is easier um but those those are my thoughts there um so that's great that's awesome so so have you tried have you done any work on on improvisation so yeah so one of the things i do is i'll i'll just play a backing track in blues like in g or in b flat or whatever and just sit there and walk up and down those pentatonic scales. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to learn doing it with the alternate picking like you've suggested. Okay, okay. Um, so here, can you, can you, um, let's see how this works. Let's uh, take this for a spin. <laughs> can you open the, the link that I put in the chat and, um, and play that video? And that's an A, so you're going to have to take your pentatonic scale up to the fifth fret. Well, if we got ads, maybe. Let's... This is men's favorite uh, mini shaver in 2023. Sorry. The steel shaver. Yikes. Yeah, loud. Hold on, let it. I have ad blocker on mine, which I shouldn't. It's kind of hypocritical because I try to, I'm hoping, you know, for people to watch my YouTube videos and see the ads and I make money. But meanwhile, I've got an ad blocker <laughs> that seems to still work. Can you hear that? Yeah. All right, so this is in, uh, you said A? Yeah, it's an A, so fifth fret pentatonic. It's technically, it's an A major, but you can get away with soloing in the A minor scale. So, um... So how about stay in the form one for now? Okay. I just want you to come up, I just want you to phrase some ideas just in form one sure and I, and and i don't want you to start on the sixth string okay okay yeah Okay, good. Uh, what about bending a string? I, d just do your best. I know you're on you're on an acoustic, so those are going to be stiff strings, hard to bend. But I just want to kind of see what it looks like when you're bending a string. Sure. Nice. Good. Okay, stop. What about this? So stop the music for a second. Pause it so it doesn't make you watch the uh, ad again. Hopefully. <laughs> Give me a second here. I'm not sure what, where that's playing in the background. Okay. While Brad's working on that, just reminding everybody, uh, this is kind of a simulation of what the guitar class is going to be like. Um, my online guitar workshop that's going to be like, uh, that's it's next Monday, the 17th, and there are still spaces available. Uh, there's unlimited spaces as an observer, and there's about there's about seven spaces left as a participant so looking forward to more people signing up um, the links are in the description and in the comments to sign up for this class if you're if you sign up as an observer you're gonna get kinda what you're getting here except uh, except there'll be more students um, a participant will be participating like Brad is okay um, so let's see oh yes so go back stay in the A minor pentatonic up at the fifth fret Okay. And now I want you to do this little, the diving board lick that I've called it. I don't know if you've played this lick before, but you're going to bend. So you're going to bend the seventh fret. And then double stop, or you're, it's a double, you're pressing both strings. Uh, but technically, I guess, unless you play them at the same time, it's not a double stop. But play them like that. 
don't play them simultaneously. Play them like this. Okay. Good. And so let's go um, after that. So this is the, so this, li okay, so this is what I, or here, I'll show you one, a little bit more. So, so then go eight to five on the second string with a pull off. Yeah. I'm added extra in there. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Doesn't that? It's not about being perfect. So then seven to five on the third string, and then yeah, and then then go like this after that. There you go. So, like that. so here's what I want you to do. I want you to use that concept, that bending. That's the main concept. Anything after it is is up to you. You could go. Whatever. I don't care what you do after it. I want you to start a, that with the concept. So. So kind of think of it like, uh, for now, as an exercise, it's not necessarily going to sound great, but as an exercise, I just want you to form idea uh, about four or five ideas to the backing track with this lick. And just, tr just let your fingers go. Just try to let your fingers go and start with this and play some stuff after it, and then start over and then when you're kind of uh, I don't know what to do next then go back to this and s play some different stuff after it okay see what I'm saying so pre press so start the YouTube video again and go ahead and do that for me okay Awesome. 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 Stop it. Now. Okay. So that is that that's an exercise that I would suggest you, you play around with, you know, when you practice, especially, I mean, this is assuming you want to play lead guitar and I'm guessing you do because you wouldn't be working on all those forms if you didn't. Right. So I would start with focusing on just improvising in form one. And then if you start to really get it, then add form two, come up with some ideas in form two. But I would do separate things. First of all, I would spend a little time mastering this lick. And I mean, have a tempo in your head just by itself. Don't, don't have the music playing. Have a tempo in your head, but, you're, but you wanna master this and create, um, I don't know, five, let, let's call this an assignment till I see you next. Create five phrases to follow that. Right, one, two, three, you see what I mean? Yeah. Create different ideas, starting with the diving board lick and um and then go into an improvisation and try to fit those ideas in do that as one specific exercise 
and then do another exercise where you just you just go for it. All right. right? So that that's it. Let's let's move on. So that's that's for that's your kind of lead guitar lesson, right? Um, those are my thoughts for today. All right. So then you were saying um, you were working on Bad Fish and having trouble with it. Yeah. So. So show me what's going on with Bad Fish. Man, so let me pull this up. We're real talking quick. about Bad Fish by Sublime. Everybody who's watching is like, "What's Bad Fish?" Yes, Bad Fish. <laughs> when you grab a hold of me. Ching, All right. Ching, ching. I, I struggle with the uh, I struggle with the reggae beat. So it's A B minor G A. So I just want to see kind of how you're playing it. Uh, so so. Nice. Nice. But he actually plays it like I, I can't no, even. No, 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 no. So I, 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 I did some research because you asked. <laughs> no, he doesn't. I researched. I watched a video of him playing, and he's doing downstroke. So he's going like this. Ah. You always got to check. I, I do this more and more, and this is something you want to do. The first thing I, I listened to it and I thought, are those upstrokes? <laughs> right, it sounds like it kind of, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, and and typically in reggae it might be, but in this case those aren't up. And I checked. I was like, well, I want to know for sure. So I looked at it live, and he's doing downstrokes. In fact, what he's doing reminds me a lot of the the style that I did when I was playing gypsy jazz, which why this came easy to me. So this is a tricky thing. Now you can play your bar chords, right? Sure, yeah. Okay. So so the um sort of the the uh not this is not to say this is exactly what he's doing the whole time, but the fundamentally, I think the fun what he's doing and the best way to practice this is to go like this. Because it's just a little timing hit. So, so your E major shape with the bar. So E, sorry, uh, E bar chord shape fifth fret. There's your A, and then then your B minor, which is um, rather than doing that, just go up two frets. Okay, so make it a minor. Take your middle finger off. Oh, okay. And then you go down to the third fret for the G. Back to the back to the. Yeah, yeah, put your middle finger back on to make it a major, and then back to the fifth fret, right? So you've got... Now, the, you're, so I'm doing a little timing hit in between. Okay. Right, so each time I change chords, I'm starting with a little... And then immediately that, let, that super snappy, quick, choked-off note. And then from then, while I'm on that chord, I just do a little timing scrape in between. So let me slow it down so you see what I'm doing. And then another thing you're going to want to try to, so, so let's start there. So, so try something like that and slow it down. Stop. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Secondly, the second thing you're going to want to do is um, you, is try to avoid the top two strings. Okay. Entirely. You're going to press them, but but you know try to angle your hand down so you're hitting you're hitting the bottom four. See, that's, let me hear it again. Hold on, Brad. So let's stop for a second. Can you play like a scale or something? Uh, 
Uh -huh. Okay, sound's waking up again. Your sound is cutting out. Uh, so do it again for me. Sorry about that. No problem. And I'll try to point my sound hole more at the, at the computer. Okay, good, 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 good. So, yeah, um, and then... Um, I guess you're just grabbing that bass string when you take, like, right when you move chords, you, you, yeah, you grab I the might, bass string. Yeah, I might hit the side. bass string a little bit more when at the first, yeah. the little... Now, as crazy as this sounds, you're going to want to take... Now, also, by the way, this is going to be infinitely easier on an electric guitar. Well, I don't know about infinitely, but it's going to be easier to execute on an electric guitar. But I want you to take the pressure that you're... Cur the, the, the amount, the duration that you're squeezing that chord and cut it in half. Yeah, I feel that. Okay, but I think you switched the chord on to the the, uh, the 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 downbeat. So make sure you're still going. So one and two, three, four, one, two. Yeah. Ah, the sound is cutting out again. <sighs> you hear that? Yeah. And it's cutting out again. It's cutting in and out right now. Like you, you go for a while. I don't think it's about your volume. I don't think it's a matter of how much volume. I think it's just laptops. Um, like uh, it's better to have, um, obviously it's better to have a good audio system, but um, uh, it's even better to have like, like it's better to have a, I mean, I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you great. I just need to get a microphone maybe for my acoustic or I need to plug my electric into the laptop or into the mixer. You know what I mean? So this yeah, is the, the, the electric time. into the that's what I'm doing. My electric is plugged directly into my audio interface. I can uh, I mean, I, my SG is sitting literally right here. I can plug that sucker in real fast if we want to do that. You plug know? it into the to the to your into the mixer. OK, try that. Let's try. It. OK, folks, can... while he's doing that, I'm going to talk to you for just a minute. So just a reminder, this is, you're watching a live guitar lesson in, in action. Um, and this is what a lesson with me looks like, except in the guitar class that I'm doing. Um, it's going to be more students. It's going to be, you know, up to 10 students. It'll be an hour and a half. So I, um, I'll be sort of hopping from student to student. And then people who are observers will get to watch. Um, they'll get to watch the class. And essentially, if I were you as an observer, I would just pretend like I'm talking to you and take the class as if I'm speaking to you, do everything I ask the student to do as if you were them. Um, so, yeah, so the, the link to sign up for the class is in the description and uh, it should be in a pinned comment on Facebook and on YouTube, TikTok. Um, it is not. So my TikTok friends, sorry, you're watching on the phone. Hi, guys. Hi, TikTok people. Um, oh, I, wow. I don't know how to get you guys uh, still trying to figure out. I wish I could live stream, multi-stream to TikTok as well. All right. Can you hear that? Is that too loud? I can hear it. All right. <laughs> Is that a Gibson SG or a... It is. Nice. That might be my next guitar when I decide that I can afford, that I can, when I decide I can buy a guitar again, which may not be for a while. Are you going to, you're going to stand up now? Yeah, that's okay. It's easier for me to... I understand. That's good. So let's, let's hear it now. Let's hear the, the, the bad fish now. All right. Let me turn the delay off. Over. Yeah, there's a, an effect going on there. Yeah. Sorry, I got my pedal board back here. I'm using a helix. I understand. So. Yeah. 
That's good. So, so I would definitely suggest that you just constantly work on tightening, like l l even making it less and less than you could possibly imagine it should be. Right, like when you play Sublime, I've noticed this on uh, on what's it called too? Uh, oh, that um, and I really want to know my man. I really yeah. want to say uh, uh, Santeria. Santeria. It's the same thing. It's super. You know, it's super tight, really super tight. You have to really loot tight. Yeah, it's like you're almost palm muting with your fingers. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it is a it is a really fast, really tight. Right, super fast. So so remember, so just just you know, I mean, like don't even. Don't even try to squeeze it as hard as you think you need to to make it sound. See yeah, I, mean? I love that. I love that. It's, That's an excellent idea. It's, it's, thanks. So, okay. All right. So then what else? What else? Um, so, um, is there any, are, do you have any specific questions, um, that, uh, you know, we haven't discussed yet today that you wanted to look at? Man, I'm, I'm super happy. I'm really excited. Like a, a few of the things I'm definitely going to take back are the alternate picking on the pentatonic, right? And then the, the one, three stops, right? So, right. Yeah, and then, yeah. um, definitely what I'm going to be playing bad fish out of my mind tonight. So I'll be, uh, trying to just rake the. You know, right. Um, <laughs> right. So uh, another thing to sort of keep in mind with the right hand um, is how do I explain this? So th this this is the gypsy jazz, the gypsy jazz uh, technique um, where you're really like it's like this almost loose wrist, limp wrist, really loose wrist and you're and you really want to get that throw. Like when I do it, it's not bent, but it's sort of like that yeah. a little bit. It's not straight. And, but it's really, you want to get this sort of like your wrist is like you're, like you're, like you're holding your hand which is like a wet rag or something. You're going whip, 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 right? Okay. You really want to get that. But I, I think, I mean, I think your right hand is okay. I don't think, I think your left hand is where you're not quite getting the snappiness. One other thing, have you tried that this works for, this actually helps me with, uh, with the left hand squeezing. And that is turning my bar chords around like this. So I'm I'm even I'm thumbing the top string. Okay. Oh, so hammer. instead of barring, you thumb that spot right there. I see just to deaden the string. Or you can press it or deaden it. For, so for the minor one, you have to make sure you pull you push your first finger further up. So it's covering the first three strings. Yeah. So you might play around with that. Um, you would. F you might find that. Um, not only is that going to help, it might help. It might help you with with your control. Um, but it's also going to help with your stamina, because this. Especially, you know, if you're playing bar chords and you're like this for a long time, this is going to start hurting, right? Your hand, your arm's going to, your, this area is going to start hurting. This is a nice little way to switch it around and you're using entirely different muscles. I was just going to ask you, whenever I play live, like, and I play a bunch of bar chords like that, man, my hands are just so fatigued and dead after every song. And like, like it just this, feels you, so much, yeah. Yeah, that's what that and that's the point. That's what I'm saying is that I I'm the same way when I play, you know, you play a lot. If you play a song where it's a lot of bar chords, this you're going to get this is going to start to cramp, right? It's going to yep. start to hurt and cramp and get really tired. And so that's why that this is the perfect way to 
kind of switch it around. Um, and you don't even have to thumb, you don't have to press this at all. You can just mute it, right? You don't even really have to do that. Um, and you can also show me your, oh, by the way, let me see your A form bar chord. So. The A shape. So you're doing a three fingered A shape? Yeah, I know a lot of people do it like that, but I can't ever really get it to ring out. Well, I, I, of course I say that and it rung out. And you did it fine. Well, <laughs> a couple years ago, I would have told you straight up, stop doing it that way and start doing it with the one finger bar. Right. But I've, I've kind of loosened up about that because, well, I heard that actually, I think in classical music, they do it like this. Classical guitarists, they use, they partly because of the way they're holding their guitar, they use the three finger method. Yeah. Right? Like they're making a normal A chord. My wife does that as well. She uses the three fingered method instead of the bar. Well, for me, it, it was more about how I learned to play the A chord when I was a kid. I mean, I, I didn't learn to play it like that. I learned to play it with three fingers. Well, so, so did I. So did I. The difference for me is that I had a bunch of friends who were who played guitar and they all did it like that. And they, they yeah. explained it to me that this is how you do a, a bar <laughs> chord for A. And I remember the I remember it drive me crazy at first. I don't use my third finger by because if you notice, my third finger does not bend inward, but my oh, wow. pinky does. So I use my pinky for bar chords instead of my third finger. Jimmy yep. Page did that as well. Uh, kind of the same that. thing with your with your power chords. Like I always play them like that. I never play them like that. I like try to yeah. try to I lay actually, that finger down. Yeah, I do. I do one finger with power chords too. Instead, I mean, sometimes I'll do them like this for whatever reason. But a lot of times, I'll do them yeah. just like I'm doing my A form bar chord. A different sound too, right? You're getting more tight sound if you just use two fingers versus versus putting the octave in there as well. So. Oh, you mean, oh, well, th there's also that. There's just playing the f the root and the fifth of yes. the power chord as opposed to throwing the octave in. Yeah, right. I mean, it depends on what you're going for. It depends a, a lot. I've done, I, again, three, four years ago, I would have told you add the octave. Sure. But I've found more and more that a lot of, a lot of these, as I've been making these types of videos and learning how bands are actually doing it i'm discovering yeah i was wrong a lot of bands were using just the two the two notes for bar, for power chord so which is fine yeah that's fine uh the only reason why i will sometimes harp on using the two fingers is because as if you're still working on bar chords i want you to that helps you get the the that helps you get the position right you know sure. what i mean yep. so, We've been going on for a while. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna. I think I'm gonna wrap it up because it's almost one o'clock. Um, so, but I was glad. I'm glad I was able to help you with bad fish. And thank you for doing this, Brad. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you next Monday. And um, let me, you know, think of. Uh, did you get the questionnaire, by the way? I did. I got it. I haven't had a chance to open it, but I did see I don't, it came. I believe. At this point, I actually don't really need you to fill it out. But if you wanted to, <laughs> if you it, if it helps you, because I've seen, I know, I know what to expect. Uh, the yeah. questionnaire. I, I just want to go into these to this class knowing as much as possible about each different person. Sure. Um, so fantastic, dude. Fantastic. Thank you very much for um, for uh, being part of this experiment with me. Yeah. And um and I don't know, I haven't seen anybody else do this before. So this is uh, <laughs> I I I'm sure someone has, but this has been this has been a lot of fun. So I am going to stop the live stream. So just one last thing everybody, just remember if you're interested in the guitar class, uh click on the link in the comments or in the description.